Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes of um, time, uh, about 20 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to go through um, uh, a little bit about the technology we're introducing at the Open, the 150th Open this year. Uh, my name's Lawrence Norman, so I'm uh, head up sports technology unit at NTT Data UK. Um, and I'll try and keep this kind of lightweight, entertaining. It won't, it'll look like a training video at the start, but it won't, it won't be that bad. We'll look at some of our digital twin technology we're introducing uh, this year at the Open, why it's different from what we've done in previous years, uh, talk about some of the other sports that we, um, we sponsor and the technology transformations we have in those as well, um, <coughs> and then broaden out a little bit into other digital twin technology, a little bit what digital twin is. Should be about 20 minutes, leave a bit of time for questions, although I am here for the rest of the championship. Um, to Sunday, so if you've got any other questions, then jump in. So first of all, um, I'll just introduce a few of the features of ShotView. This is um, an initiative we've done together with the, with the RNA, so the organizers of, of the Open. And we really took this opportunity on the 150th to go up another level in terms of capability that we, we deliver uh, to all of the fans. Um, <coughs> so uh, a few of the features of it. This one, you'll, you'll see it's available on the, on the open.com app. This is the online edition. Um, first view is this interactive course map. It, it does what it says, which is you can dive into each of the holes. You can watch each of the groups moving along as they go through the process. You can dive into the groups. And then as we're gathering data now in real time or near real time, we, we think it's about, we, we're, we're testing it out, but between 20 and 30 seconds of the ball uh, being hit, we will get that information as to where the ball is landed to within two centimeters accuracy and then we're positioning it on this screen so you've got to watch your favorite players choose the players you want to follow choose the groups you want to follow and dive in to see the details of of what's going on there um, so that's the interactive course map um, the second uh, app if you like is the interactive scorecard this is following on from a traditional scorecard you can see the, the things you know and love here so how each player is doing on each hole above below or on par but each of them also in addition now has this um, this interactive, um, completely data-driven um, map of that hole and what they did. So instead of just saying, uh, I think we had a, <coughs> I think we had um, a two under earlier on today. So you can see what happened there. You'll follow each shot. You'll be able to go backwards in time, forwards in time to that hole, and really dive into and interrogate what happened on that shot. Uh, by the way, this is this is fake data. This is uh, Tringali isn't doing this badly. By the way, I think he's two under already he's not three over this is synthetic data we use for the testing so don't trust this um, but you'll be able to see how far it went and again we're, we're gathering this data to two centimeter accuracy on the course right now so that's the um, scorecard the third component is uh, is called clip tag this is actually the the kind of guts of this new digital twin platform uh, it's what we're able to do is to gather all of the shot information so over four days 156 players and the cut about 32,000 individual shots we'll be recording on every hole. And these are all being, we then create a data-driven three-dimensional video clip that is then made available to, on a searchable library. This is now being used by the RNA content team. So when they, as they write their blog posts and they write an article about something that's happened on the course, they'll in some cases be adding in this content as well that allows whoever's reading that blog to kind of just, again, dive into the details, animated view of what happened in there different from some of the other majors. I think you're seeing some of um, some of the similar level of data gathering, but they also, they've typically gone down the route of video clips, which are still quite linear. You see what the, you know, what the director did, where the camera happened to be, and you have to watch that clip. These are all, again, in, you're able to interrogate it, dive through, go back in time, so it's much more interactive. Um, these clips are then used for all the other apps that are used within the, um, the ShotView platform as a whole. Uh, and then the, um, the, the last and not least bit is the NTT data wall. So this is the physical installation. It's a 20 meter high definition LED screen, 20 meters wide, five meters high screen. It's out in the spectator village, so right by all the food and beverage and shops and stuff. It becomes one of the most popular places to be during the, as we get, certainly as we get towards the end of the championship. It's the one place you can be in this, you know, over this, over this, this sub, I think the course is what, 7,200 yards or so. But you can stay there. You can see everything that's going on. You have the video. You have all of it. And if anything particular happens on the on the course, we have a kind of prioritized algorithm that tells you all the most important things and then replays them 
again, driven completely off, off of data. Um, uh, what, what we found in the past, and by the way, this is the first time the data wall, the physical data wall, has been back since 2019, so for three years. We obviously missed a year. We did an online edition. Uh, last year, we weren't sure about whether we'd have spectators or not. We decided not to put it in place, so the first time it's been back. So really excited, and it's become a real fan favorite. And the RNA, when we were doing the planning, was really keen that we get that installation back and, and help the fans understand what's going on. And some of the design challenge here, you know, I'll, I'll go through a little bit about how we got to this end position here, but really this is about helping the fans either here or at home, anywhere in the world, understand much more about what's happening on the course and you know, how, to, how to understand a bit more about the championship and the, some of the decisions the players are making during the play. So this is, um, I'll now dive into a little bit of, uh, I won't go too deep on the technology, but what we mean by digital twin, and we're hearing this term a lot now, it's starting to become mainstream, already has been in manufacturing and automotive and aerospace business, but we're seeing it become mainstream in a lot of other businesses now, and we're using it in a lot of our sports activations. So I'll go through some of the components. The first bit we'll see is this, um, any digital twin is based on a, a very accurate digital mapping of a physical thing, whatever that might be. In this case, it's the old course at St. Andrews. Uh, and that was done using, um, we created the, the, the bare mesh components through um, uh, dr drones, essentially flying and taking lots of photographs and then using those to build a topographical map. And then we're using LIDAR mapping, so laser mapping on the green. So getting down to as accurate as one centimeter accuracy on that course. So we're getting that, and that's the first bit. Then we get the, on top of that, we then have to lay the textures. So if you, don't, if you have that, you just have all those little yellow dots. It doesn't mean much but we're getting the texture on it. We bring in some other data to bring in not just the course, but the surroundings. So the, we get the buildings in St. Andrews, we get the, the clubhouse, all those kind of iconic buildings. Then we lay over some textures for the different types of grass on the green, on the fairway, some of the gorse bushes, a few trees, there's not many. And I try to make this as photorealistic as we can. That's what we bring in. One thing we decided to do when we designed this is not bring in accurate weather because it changes too often. So we decided to make it sunny all the time on this course, the digital version of the course, but um, hopefully it will stay true for the next four days. So then we have a physical, a nice little, very accurate, uh, digitized version of the old course. Um, the next bit is, once you have that, is how do you gather data? And you'll see when we talk about digital twin, all of it is about more accuracy, more precise data, and everything in real is real time. So rather than in the past, we'd have had to wait for things to happen, we can do th this very accurately in real time. So now we have data gatherers on the course, um, working with one of our partner organizations. They're collecting the data using uh, a combination of um, lasers, trigonometry, basically, and, 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 and GPS, which gets us to with this two centimeter accuracy. Last year, if you were here, you would, have, you would have seen some of the walking scores. I think we talked about them in the presentation. They follow the groups. That meant we couldn't gather the ball position data until they'd walked up to it. So they walked with the group to the next shot. Whereas this, this year we have people waiting for the balls to land and then we gather that information up within 20 to 30 seconds of the ball being hit. Depends how far it rolls, how quick it is before it stops. So that's the second component. So now we have a very accurate digital representation of a physical thing, which is the golf course, and a uh, low latency, a very rapid gathering of the data on the course. And then the third bit is, like, who cares? about any of that, what are we actually trying to do? And in this case, we're trying to engage, entertain, and inform fans, both you know, fans who might be really experienced, who understand golf, understand the Open, and some who might not really understand all of the, 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 the way it plays and what it really means. Uh, because we've got this accuracy now, we can now start seeing when we have players who decide to maybe, maybe sh hit the ball off the tee to the left of the fairway or the right of the fairway, sometimes risking you know, a hazard to get further, sometimes playing a little bit safe but might go out of bounds, but they're making different tactical decisions based on their experience and sometimes, a lot of times, the weather. But because of this, you can then replay this. And that's the aim here, is to give a visual representation of that complex data that entertains, informs, and engages fans in this sport. Um, and with a longer term goal, if we work with the RNA, so this is the 150th, uh, 150th anniversary, that the RNA are thinking in terms of golf, golf relevance in 50 years time. So not next quarter, 50 years time. And we're trying to now build out this to engage broader audiences, a more diverse audience, people who might not normally get engaged in this sport. 
So that's the, the challenge we had, and that's what we put in place um, for this year and following years. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about digital twin in some other sports now, and our US colleagues will know this one well. So the, we, we, we do a number of sports over this summer. We have the kind of summer of sports within NTT. We also have the IndyCar series. We're series uh, sponsors of that. Um, 17 races across North America, and we have the, the most iconic one, the Indy 500 in um, Indianapolis in May. It's happened in May. And we, we've been, we put in place two, kind of two, two versions of Digital Twin here. The first one is, is really looking at a digitized version of the Speedway itself, the, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's uh, between 350,000 or so, sometimes more, depending on if they go into the music festivals or not, uh, fans who turn up on a single day. So it's, a, it's the biggest single day sporting event in the world and trying to get everybody in there and get them safe and comfortable is a challenge. So that modeling that speedway, looking at where the, the gates are, where queues are building up, well, queues building up in the toilets allows people to organize themselves, the fans, but also allows the venue organizers to, to intervene. That's just, that is the, the next bit of a digital twin is not just modeling things, it's being able to simulate what's going to happen, predict things, and then do something about the actual physical environment. In that case, it could be opening up new gates, putting new st stewards in place to help the queues, make it more comfortable for everybody. That's the first digital twin is the speedway itself. The second one is, again, more about fan engagement. So these, these cars racing around the circuit, something like 200 sensors in each car, bringing out all that information as to what's happening in the car, the telemetry. And we're using that to start engaging fans more in um, predicting what might happen. So often in a motorsport, the, the interesting things aren't necessarily at the front of the race. They can be anywhere in that track. And you're seeing movement of cars getting closer and predicting whether there's an overtaking maneuver going to happen or what a pit strategy might be, how that might affect the race. All of these are going about engaging a new generations and diverse audience in the sport. Um, to talk briefly about uh, Tour de France, which is also running simultaneously with, uh, with the Open, so running all the way through July. Um, stage, I think this, this one actually, this stage today is going up to Alpe d'Huez. Today, again, he using heavy amounts of digital twin technology for the Tour, including you know, very accurate mapping of each of the stages. You think gathering data across 7,200 yards of the old course is difficult. That's 3,200 kilometers over a month of racing with stages happening, changing every day or two. Um, data being gathered off the bikes, off the riders, digital mapping of the stages, including all the topography. Um, it's worthwhile downloading the, uh, the Tour app. You, it's an augmented reality app. You can see the stages, see where the riders are on that as well. Um, again, bringing that to life. Also, that data is also used to help the staging teams to make sure that, again, the stages are safe and managed well. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about digital twin technology. You know, as I said, the key part here is very accurate modeling of a physical environment. Now, for a digital twin, that might be, that might be some geography. It might be a golf course. But it could be you know, an aircraft engine, a car. It could even nowadays be an organization, teams, or processes that used to be quite static and stable. Now, modifying them and predicting changes and how that might help. So NTT Data have... Um, we have a lot of experience in digital modeling of physical environments, including a lot of technology, satellite-based technology that builds out these um, digital elevation models, digital terrain models of uh, physical environments gl globally. It's used a lot by uh, mobile phone technology companies. I know some of you in here are using this already for radio planning, uh, for 5G networks, but also for insurance, flood, flood planning, disaster planning, anything that requires any kind of geographic view. The UK has now modeled every town above 30,000 population has an accurate model of that town that's available for any of those kind of use cases. Um, and then outside of sports, looking at, um, we do a lot of work with smart cities and some of our clients in, in other kind of industries. This was some work we did with the city of Las Vegas um, in, uh, with the state of Nevada and looking at some specific use cases that we could we could use both digital twin modeling technology and kind of edge compute technology, machine vision, to again help intervene in certain areas and make that city a bit more comfortable and, and, and safer. So this, for example, is looking at um, cameras looking at cars driving the wrong way. This car's turning left when there is no left turn there. Identifying that that's happened, 
And the purpose here isn't necessarily to arrest that driver and figure out why. It's to, it's to, again, is there a physical change that needs to be made to the road signage there that would help that become a safer junction? Um, this one, we can talk about narrow, narrow use case, narrow AI. This one's specifically looking at people climbing up the Las Vegas side, again for safety, again to intervene a little bit before things start getting out of control um, uh, and to make this a little bit safer. So there is an algorithm somewhere, I think you guys probably have this, <laughs> somewhere that, uh, that triggers an event when somebody climbs up the, the Las Vegas sign. Um, now, you know, for, for lots of people it's kind of interesting, but why is that important to most clients? Well, d digital twin technology now allows uh, almost any organization to start doing some modeling and simulation based on, on the data they've got within their organization. And that means you can start prototyping new products or processes or work you want to do through much faster innovation cycles at lower cost because it's not, you're not physically building a thing, much lower risk and just able to experiment a lot more because often we don't know what we need until we've done those kind of experiments. So it goes through iterations of innovation much faster. Um, you can also simulate what changes might be. So try to make a change use historic data and then look at what those impacts might be, so what the future might, might look like with different interventions, and then you know, predict what those changes might, might be in terms of the outcomes you're looking for. So if you're looking for better customer engagement, then how, does that, how would those things do, do that? And then you've got a much, much better view of the outcomes that those interventions might have. So um, that's why we think, I think with, if you look at Gartner, for example, digital twin technology in all industries will start becoming mainstream for all of us in you know in a year between one and three years so it's something that's worth thinking about now and it's not limited to only certain industries we think it's relevant for for everybody um so with that uh, i can take any questions or i can just be around and we can catch up um over a few drinks so thank you very much thank you Good cut. <laughs>